Hello and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are introducing Holiday Party Animal and its coordinating dies. And this set is an add-on to our previous party animal. So we've got all these little guys and now all of these icons will work with them too and you get a brand new party animal. Also in our brand new set Bah Humbug, that little sheep there works as a party animal too. So lots of fun mix and match abilities here. We've got a cute little raccoon in this set. And then all of these elements all related to holidays that you can use throughout the year. Now you can either stamp them directly onto your party animal the, like I did there or you could stamp them separately and die cut them. So there you can see we have a little trick-or-treat bag, a witch hat, a pie and a little pilgrim's hat, a dreidel and a yarmulke, a little music book there and a winter hat. We have there some steam that can come off the pie or you can turn it that way and it can come off the mug. I'll show you in a second. A gingerbread man and a present. We have a candy cane, a little Santa hat, an Easter egg, a four-leaf clover for St. Patty's or for really any kind of good luck card, and a little wishbone, the mug I was talking about earlier, and a cute little music note stamp. We have a great sentiment in this set with the Let's Celebrate that's great for so many different holidays and for birthdays. And of course our exclamation point to add to the end. Now it's time to add some color, and so I'm going to be working with my Copic markers with some warm grays here, which I really like using for all sorts of different critters. So here I'm starting with the W4 and then blending it with the W2, and then adding a little bit of that W6 just to create a little extra shade along the bottom around his eyes. Now I'm laying down the light color first so that it helps blend the two colors a little better. It just kind of wets the paper and helps the blending between all these colors work just that much better. I'm making some shadows under his arms and under his neck there. And now I'll make the shadows under the bottom part of his arms. So W6, then W4, and then W2. Then I have forgotten to color the little bottom part of his face, so I'll do that in the same way that I did the top part. And next I can start working on his belly there. And as you can see now I've brought in the W0 just to make his belly lighter than the rest of his body. And next I'm going to color his tail. I'm doing the darker part close to his body just so that there's some nice contrast. And then I'll make the other portions of his tail lighter. Now I'm going to color the part of his eyes here darker than the rest of his body. So now is when I'm bringing that W8 in. So W8 to W6 to create a really nice dark look here. And at first I had brought the W4 in there, but I thought, you know what? That's a little too light. So I just covered it right up with the W6. And now I'll color the parts of his tail just the same way I colored the rest of his body. And I just love how cool he looks. Now I colored the other little raccoon there in the same way. And now I'm coloring the jack-o'-lantern. And I love how it pops stamped directly on him. It looks really cool. And now I'm going to add some color to the rest of these little images. Now because these images are so small, I'm using very little ink because I don't want the ink to bleed out of it. So I'm just using a little bit and then trying to blend it and just do it really simple and easy. Using some nice colors to create a wooden dreidel. And now some pie and my little gingerbread guy there. As I colored him in, I thought it'd be nice if he had some little kind of dark toasty edges. So as I brought in that darker color for that. And now for the Santa hat, I'm going to use that red. Now take that R39 to get a darker look and then go over it with R29 just to make it match a little bit better. And it really gives a nice little dark little shade there. But 
I decided that C7 wasn't uh, dark enough for me, so I did the C8. And now I can color in the little tiny parts just really lightly of the hat. Now I've got my little four leaf clover here. And as I was blending, uh, this is YG25 and YG23, I didn't think the colors were different enough, so I added a little bit of darkness there in the middle. And then I love coloring cups and plates, like porcelain things with warm grays. I think it looks really nice. Now a little Easter egg. I can't wait to use that one in the spring. And now I'm using a white gel pen just to fill in the blank white parts on the winter hat, on the Santa hat, and also on the candy cane. And it really makes it pop. It makes it a little more dynamic than just leaving it blank white. And then I wanted to make the gingerbread's little buttons white also, so I'm filling those in. Now here are the dies, and I bent them apart at those wire tabs to separate them all. And then I can go ahead and line it up with my stamped image, hold it in place with some low-tack tape, run it through my die cut machine and get beautifully die cut stamped images. I just love seeing those pop out of the dies. Now here is a look at all of these little pieces. You can stamp them directly on the party animals or you can die cut them and add them to the party animals just like this. So it just depends on what look you would like to get. So here's a look at these elements working with a lot of our different party animals there. We've got a little, a little pilgrim there and a little Santa. Now you can see with a candy cane and a wishbone. Now here we have a little gingerbread man and the yarmulke and dreidel and a little winter hat and a mug and a caroler's book. And I just love how you can mix and match and have so much fun with all of these images. Now I know it's super early to be creating a Christmas card, but honestly, I have to admit, I never finish my cards in time. So I really want to start early this year. So here I am starting my Christmas cards. So I went ahead and glued the little hats on and now I'm adding their little carolers books with some foam tape. And here I have a stitch rectangle and it looks like it's going to fit perfectly around those carolers. Now this is our new holiday paper line, Let's Bouquet in the Snow. And there's some gorgeous snowy backgrounds. So I'm trying to decide which one I think is going to look with my carol look great with my carolers and die cut it with my stitched rectangle. Now here I was trying to decide should I use one of the stitched hillside borders or maybe the forest border or maybe this bumpy stitch hillside and none of it looked quite right. And then I thought, you know what? We have this stitch scallop cupcake wrapper and it's a really great little rounded hill. So it's a fun way to use a die for a totally different reason. I die cut it out of white and now it looks like a little puffy white cloud of snow. So right there, I'm gonna use the stitch, same stitch rectangle to die cut it so it's the perfect size and it has the stitching to match along with the rectangle that I cut earlier of pattern paper. Here's another paper from Let's Bouquet in the Snow, but I thought that that panel needed something else. So I used a green pattern from Let's Bouquet in the Snow also, just to give it a nice little border that coordinates with their green hats. And here I have the new winter scripty sayings, which I love. And I thought it would look really cool curved along the top of my panel. So I curved it here on my Misty tool. And now I can go ahead and line it up. I'm gonna stamp it with our brand new Noble Fur. Ink that up really well and stamp it. Now you're gonna see when I stamped it, I shouldn't have layered the green on yet. It was just the, the, the dimension between the two didn't let the stamp get there. So G28 matches Noble Fur really well and I just went in and filled in the spots that couldn't stamp because of the edge of the border of that die cut. Now I'm layering the red pattern paper onto a card base and now I can use some foam tape to layer my cute little party animal carolers onto the card. And I think they just look so cute like that. Oh, they're just adorable. And so my first Christmas card of the year is done and I'm so excited about it. Um, but now I wanna get back to fall. So I wanna go ahead and create a Halloween tag. So this is our new stitch circle tag. It's the largest one and I absolutely love the detail on it. And this is our new snowy backdrops. Yes, it's supposed to be snow, but depending on what color you cut it out of, it can also look like a night sky. So right there, I'm lining up the purple die cut where I thought it would look kind of nice on the snowy backdrop die, run it through my die cut machine, and you can see the cool stars and dots that have been cut out of this stitch circle. 
So now I'll pop all those little pieces out and you can see we have this kind of Swiss cheese looking thing, but when you layer it on black, it looks awesome. So here I've got a black stitch circle that I cut out and then I also cut just a little piece of a stitch circle there to layer along the bottom. And what I'm going to do is use our forest border die over that die cut. And then that way I'll have the forest border on the top but the stitch circle on the bottom. Now I'm adding glue all around all those little openings and layering these two die cuts together to have the black show through the snowy backdrop. And then I can add my cute little forest border tree with some foam tape. And now my little trick-or-treating raccoon is looking pretty cute on this background. This is the set Spooktacular from last year, but I love it. and It has great sentiments. And I wanted to stamp out the trick-or-treat sentiment on some orange cardstock. So I went ahead and stamped it out. And then just trimmed right along the bottom there. And now I have some cute pinking shears here. And so I'm just going to cut a little edge there that's just going to give a nice detail. I saw Nicole do this and I just had to do it too. <laughs> and then I'm going to punch a hole, which is this is just a standard hole punch. And then I thought it would look nice to have the edges rounded, but my corner rounder was way too big. So I'm just going to use my scissors and do it the old fashioned way. So I'm just cutting a little rounded edge on the bottom and the top there. And you'll see it really gives the tag a nice finished look. Then I can pop my little trick-or-treater up and pop up this great little tag. Now here I've got some of the new black tie lawn trimmings, which I love it. It's so classic. And I bundled it up a bunch of times and thread it through the hole, just like that. And then I can pull it right through and then tie a knot at the top too, which I think looks pretty cool. Then I'll just trim off those edges all to match. And I have a cute little Halloween tag, perfect for a little goodie bag or something like that. So here is a look at the two projects I created today, but there are so many possibilities with this holiday party animal set because of all of the cute little icons that are included in it. And so this is Holiday Party Animal and its coordinating dies. And you can see all of the great icons that you can add to any of the party animals. That's from the original party animal set, even our new Bah Humbug set, and of course the Holiday Party Animal Raccoon too. So I can't wait to see what kind of cool cards you guys come up with with this set. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye!